Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Us. Hope we're all doing absolutely amazing. It's Monday, 19-point win against St Kilda, a team that has our spot in the eight. Massive game, an eight-pointer. So if you're new around here, please like and subscribe. Does mean the world to me. We're absolutely smashing them out. I can't thank you enough for the support this year. You have all been amazing. And you know what? On the back of a big, big win, uh, a big win um, in the tail of the season, in the tail of development, in the tail of adversity, really. The boys were hurt. Um, I think Ken Cons was a little bit disrespectful to St Kilda. I can't talk. I went hard yesterday. Credit to St Kilda. They came out as we expected in the preview. Big pressure. Big, big Pressure around the ball, forcing kicks. Calton were very fumbly. But this game, he assured what I was saying in the preview. A maturity factor about the group. This group is growing before our very eyes. And even in the losses, there was little tales that there was some things going on with maturity, the way they overuse the ball in the back half, which is very brazen um, at times. But to see them now with that application in that second half was fantastic. And Full credit to St Kilda. They gave they gave that all. They pressured the ball. But it was as I predicted. There is a skill gap between both clubs. And this isn't disrespectful. We are better. We are a better football side. And even with the players out, the system held up. The system could absorb that pressure in the first and give them something to balance on in the second half. And once that second half, and it's real hard to keep them high pressure numbers... Very similar, I keep saying, St Kilda account and last year. It's hard when you're chasing games and the pressure comes and you're relying on the pressure fundamentals because if they don't happen for four quarters in a long season, it's easy to pick them off. And it's interesting when we look at the stats because the Blues are really showing us signs now, particularly the last three games, four games, Port Adelaide, Eagles, Collingwood, now St Kilda, of a game situation. Right, And the kick to handballs massively changed again. So we've seen four huge changes as we deal with different systems. Now, we know what St Kilda do. Very back half balanced. They, they take their time. They're very methodical. I called them your Nana's pantry. Everything in its place. They move up together in drops. They defend in drops. All them inside 50 is very shallow in that first half from the Blues because they flood the back half of the ground. So there is no space to work in. And Carlton really shifted in the third to a real almost kick handball, kick handball, almost a one-to-one. -one. As they invited that pressure, and the only way to beat that kind of pressure is take the contact and bang. And in the first half, there was a real myriad of the Blues. You saw Cripper try and take on eight players. Then you saw players like Fisher and Dow, maybe a bit less reluctant to, and trying to thread their way through. Eventually, that balance was found. And when it was boy or oh boy, it, it caused some issues. Real interesting that in the second half, one of Saints' strengths went down to about 12%, and that's their ability to create defensive chains resulting in inside 50s. And that didn't really come from the forward 50 tackles. That came more from that second wave we talk about, where Calton push up their defence and the halfbacks and the wings work as almost an extra line of defence. Holland's acres really poignant in that. Nick Newman really poignant in that as well with his intercept possessions. And the 62 tackles, we were out-tackled by them. This really went up, though, in the third quarter as Carlton to try, try to starve and push them out wide, which was really imperative into the change. Inside 50 is there up from last week. This is the best stat for me, though. And this is why, on the rewatch, Although the first half was bad, Carlton were always in control in the back half, really. They they were rebounding very easy. It was just the application was slightly off. It was a little bit fumbly. Inside 50 mark rate, as you'd expect, not brilliant, um, not bad, but when you're flooding it in that. But this is a big thing here. Contested possessions and the clearance differential through the charts. Carlton really maximised that and tried to gain territory and it was really interesting. Around stoppages and clearance is probably how you can beat St. Kilda's system because everyone is set in the 6-6% six, six of clearance, but also everyone's clustered around the ball. So you have options. You can't really flood the back half of the ground because you seed 
clearance and easy ball. And in the third, particularly from these clearances, Carlton took that extra kick inside 50. They looked to switch. You saw Newman do it numerous times. Connors did it. Kerno did it to a much aplomb. Goal kicking accuracy, down. Um, first half was was poor. Um, again, you see what pressure does. And this is a credit to St Kilda's system. It's a credit to Hawthorne's system versus Collingwood. When you put risk association with kicks and you give up them easier kicks outside 50, like, like Saints do, they flood deep. They want you to kick shallow. Scope is going to be hard. The chance creation is about where you want it. But this is a big thing here. The TPI indicator saying that Carlton were 21.2% better. Huge shift because in the first half, that was negative 2.8. So that's a huge shift. That's the side that has gone out the second half and said, this is what we need to do. And full credit to all 23 blocks that went out there because this was a hard game. This was a hard game. Although I was confident going into it, and I stand by it. I do think on our day, we are a six to eight goal better side than St. Kilda. Right? Three and a bit goals. With injuries, with that start, I think that's validated. Credit to Saints. But that's the thing that Carlton really impressed me this week. I knew it was going to be tough that first quarter. Right? If they brought that intensity, how they came out of that adversity is a huge credit to the system. And for me... I hold this win in higher regard than the other seven because I don't think they've been as questioned as this under the intensity. They've got jumps on the other teams. This one here, they had to switch on. They had to eyes down, look in. And they they came out with this test again without their best players. Seven players not there and missing the 22. I don't use that as an excuse. If you lose, I don't use it as a to poo-poo the opposition. These are all AFL footballers. But this is a credit to the system and another string in the belief. In the belief. And who caused these wins? All right? Let's look at some players that need to get a bit of kudos. Jackie Martin. For me, Jack Martin was imperative in this, particularly in the second half. Charlie Kerner won't get the props for this game that he probably deserves. But Charlie Kerner's maturity and his development and Jack Martin's game wiseness, allowing other players to get in behind and being a decoy at times, shouldn't be understated. But 15 touches, all of them hitting their targets. Five marks, no marks on the lead. He didn't play that lead role. He he really did try back into his man, right? So I want you to notice that, particularly in the second half, he didn't fly. He kind of backed in and was like, I'm wedging you here. I'm leaving this space in front of me at the fall of the ball. For my, for my small forward contingent. Five ground ball gets. Very good for Jack Martin. That you don't often see it. 100% goal kicking accuracy. Free score involvements. 12 pressure outs. These are really interesting from Jackie. He's, a, he's an eight pressure act type of guy. Since coming back into the side, he's really looking to focus this. But Jack Martin's not just his goal kicking. He's now he's quite often looking for that short kick and looking to spread the play. Right? Looking to try and just dissect the very rigid back line of St Kilda, and did it to much aplomb. And it's great to see. Zaki Fisher, he returned. A lot of us had faith. Some of us didn't. But ultimately, he was supported very well. The nine contested possessions, the three tackles. We talked about him in the VFL. His defensive application was really standout. We called it in the VFL wrap between us all that he'd play this week because of that midfield shift. And boy, oh boy, did he back the faith. Right? Fantastic game. When you're having 30 disposals and looking to take the game on, playing a little bit on the wing, back half of the ground and in the midfield, different role for Zach Fisher. But for me, he needs to be in the engine room. Score launch is one. Four rebound 50s, three inside 50s. I thought his defensive running was really strong for him. You can see he's put a lot of work into his defensive application. And it's great to see the four clearances. Real strong meters gained per disposal. Remember, that's probably the more important one. You want to see what they're doing it per touch. 21 pressure acts, the seven ground ball gets. This guy was fearless in the second half. And probably in the first quarter, our best player in the four score involvements. And what Zach did really well was the understanding to let Newman and Saad overlap him and him pinch in. And he played that extra role. So we've seen Boyd play it. We've seen Pom Cotter play it. We've seen Kemp play it. He was that extra behind the stoppage quite often. 
and really did well and looked to have a bit of energy. And that's a real strong key facet of Zach. When he's playing well, he's getting the ball and he's he's moving all the time. He's active. He's got active feet. My pop used to say that in football about his midfielders, right, when I was a kid, that he always wants to see you doing something in the midfield. Always be jogging. Always be hopping like a boxer ready to unleash a right hook. And that's when Zach plays really well. Really understated game from Zachy. I really enjoyed it. And you know what? It just makes that Chera loss a little bit better that he can kind of facilitate some of his role. Jacob Wheater in this guy is becoming insane, right? Insane. Because that first half could have been a shit show. But Jacob Wheatering's ability now to go, right, I've got you locked down. I'm going and taking that intercept mark. And there were so many times he overlapped their three tolls to get to the ball first. So he's peeled from the back of the pack. Incredibly difficult skill. Incredibly difficult skill. For me, Sicily, Wheatering and Taylor are the best defenders in the league at the moment on form. Wheatering, for me, is basically what Sicily gets in touches, Wheatering gets in nows. So for me, he is untouchable at the moment. Ten marks, seven intercept marks, three contested marks, 100% one-on-one -on -one win again. Can't be beat. Can't be beat, this kid. Nine intercept possession, second most on the ground. Three spoils. This is really interesting from Jacob, right? With no Mitch McGovern, we saw a return to him dictating the play. To dictating the play, to sitting back and going, bang, bang, setting it up. Brilliant, 86.7% efficiency, seven rebound 50s, cleared our lines a lot. Two score involvements, stellar game from Jacob Wheaton. And it probably will be undersold how good it was. Because this was, the form he's in, fuck me, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Up next, Nicky Newman. It's becoming boring. It's becoming boring from him. Like, honestly, actually getting boring. And what I mean by that is we called him the consummate 6 out of 10 footballer because he's got such a high floor. Now, if you remember when we talked about 6 out of 10 footballers, we said that the only way they can go is up. But if their basement is 6 out of 10 and they have a 9 out of 10 game, it's going to be fucking good, right? And then we talked about, like, the players that I say shift 1 out of 10 to 10 out of 10. If you're a 1 out of 10, you've got a long way to go to get a 10. He hasn't got a long way to go. And at the moment, the form this guy is in, if he's not all Australian, fuck me, what is all Australian? 35 touches from him, three tackles, 11 defensive half pressure acts, 10 intercept possessions. Again, that's a good understanding of what Carlton did. They pushed up beyond halfway when they didn't have the ball and they used their strength. Newman, Blake Akers and Wheatering were looking to peel and get them when they kick long. And that was a big thing for Carlton. We got St. Kilda to kick long an awful lot of times in that second half. And he is a key component of that. Six ground ball gets, 17.8 metres gained per disposal. Again, he's looking to take the game on. A few given goals, 88.6 disposal efficiency, four score involvements. And again, 30.3 of these are in the furnace, are in under a bit of strife. And again, Nick Newman, cream of the crop, Real strong performance, and you need these players. And it's scary to think that there's a few players to come back into this side. But Nick Newman is one who talks about leadership and wants to be a leader. Absolutely personification. And the three guys we've mentioned already, <clears throat> apart from Fish, are leaders in the own right. We know that we that Martin works a lot in the cultural environment at Carlton Football Club. We are in vice captain Nick Newman. One of the leaders, one of the leaders, one of the senior heads. And again, a bit of calmness down the back. What I love about him is even when Count were getting on top, he's not scared to give you a bollocking, right? Which is really strong. He gave Cripper a spray in the first, right? Which I thought was really interesting. But that shows, one, good team unity. Two, good team culture, right? That no longer is one person above, above, right? And Cripper needs a bit of accolades this week because I really enjoyed his second half. Ollie Hollands, my boy. Um, we love a little bit of Pomlands. We we do love him. Uh, 20 touches, five effective kicks. Struggled in the first. Now, people talk about 
oh, he gets thrown off the ball. Well, Campers was built like a twig and he got thrown off the ball. You know, the thing that separates Campers between other small wingers is their ability to nut up and shut up, right? Their ability to go back again. There was a great scene in the second quarter where he got ragdolled by Jack Steele and he went straight back to him, straight back to him. Rowan Marshall went straight back to him. He ain't scared. 360 metres gained, six, just under 16 metres per gained. These are the big things for me, the pressure acts and the tackles. He knew that these were a wing-heavy side. They liked the wing. Always, always spoiling, putting in that pressure, making it hard. Real solid game. And 15.4 Ks ran, ridiculous. High work rate really helped us out. His mate, Blake Akers, was outstanding too. 27 touches, 448 metres gained, 16.6 metres gained per, per, per kick. Score involvements, five, marks, 11, 27 pressure acts, 13-8 ran. The goal, the tackle. Again, this is a real. This really allows Nick Newman and Saad to be involved. It, the way that they pincer her back and they almost create a nine down the back and then in attack, they create a nine there as well. It's a very smart play and it requires very certain individuals. And Holland's bins and acres are probably the only three players on our list that can do it, particularly with Scherer and Walsh missing. And they worked incredibly hard with limited, limited, limited experience together to do this. And that's a very hard thing. Very hard thing. Blake Akers, yes, he's got that penchant for booting it out of bounds on the full, right? But you know what? His application and his desire, see what I said about Ollie Holland. Come in again. Come in again. Come in again. I ain't stopping. And that's the big thing and the difference between the first 12 rounds to now. Right, is when they make a mistake, they do it again. Cunners, he balls up that inside 50 entry. A quarter later, hits a target. Kerner, balls up an inside 50 entry. Had two wonderful assists in the third quarter. That application to dust yourself down and go again, Blake was outstanding. Outstanding performance. I love talking about this kid. I love it. You know what? Those who watch the watch along know that we have a real thing about energies, right? Positive energies and pushing this. And this guy got lambasted the first half by a lot of people on Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. Credit to the watch along. We got the Ch Dow chant going. And we had a sneaky suspicion. We did say um, that there's probably going to be a moment he needs to perform. And boy, oh boy, he did it again. He did it again. And Cripper likes him. You can see the players like him. And, you know, that goal, the smile on his face really encapsulates what I think playing team sport is about and what this football club stands for. Ten contested possessions, four tackles, five inside 50, seven clearances, just under 20 metres per game. Very important. Pressure acts just under 20. Five ground ball gets, four score involvements. He does what he does, right? And I feel like he's in an era where he's compared to Walsh. Chera, he's Paddy down, right? I remember, um, I remember, I think it was Cam McKenzie who said to me that when he walked through the doors at Hawthorne, Sam Mitchell said to him, who do you want to be? And he gave an answer about one of the legends, I think it was Luke Hodge, and he says, how about you leave this place saying that the next kid comes in wants to be that's Cam McKenzie. Incredibly powerful words. Paddy Dow, be Paddy Dow. Be who you are. Because Dangerfield's made a career from getting the ball and filling it on his boot, right? That's second half. He knew Carlton were overusing it, right? Overusing it in the stoppages, even though they had dominance. And it cost them a few times, particularly in the first half. It cost them the overuse. They're trying to be too classy. That's my issue with Carlton. When they're under pressure, they try and find the perfect goal. Paddy Dow got a bit of a brain. Just get rid of it. Get it up there. Make something happen. And when the smalls do what Motlop did in that second half, it's a very clever tactic. Real strong. You know what? I want to talk about Dow just a little bit of how important it is. We've had a lot of players that have left this club and fucking moaned. A lot of players that have actively moaned while they're on the list. They're at other clubs, right? They're at other clubs right now, all not playing. Dow not once has complained, right? He has gone to VFL. He has performed and performed and performed and not once complained. Well done. Well done, sir. Because we need more people like you in the world who aren't willing to come out. And I heard all these ridiculous rumours. Voss hates him. He's bullied. No, he's not. Not at all. 
No, 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 you know what? What you're seeing is something that's very rare in society today, in humans. Selflessness and awareness. Two ingredients. If you have selflessness and awareness, you'll go far in life. And it's something that I pray my kids grow up to be like. I, I hope they have Paddy Dow's mindset. It's not anyone else's fault. It's my fault. And I am the fucking cure. Right? Fantastic, Dow. Mate, said it in the preview. Said it on Monday. How poetic is it? We've got young players who have been forgotten about at the start of the year, like Fogarty, Paddy Dow, Marchbank, who are going to be active in us getting into finals. Well done, sir. You deserve that goal. And I tell you what, the roar was the loudest I've heard it. I went mental and so did the fans. Bravo, kid. Bravo. All in all, everything is looking good, right? But start getting some belief in these boys, chat. Because half time, there was a few people as people will validate, fuck me. I wouldn't have believed we'd won six in a row. Need to start getting behind them, right? Bit from my heritage and my culture as a Romani is my nana used to tell me that you know them affirmation spells that everyone is into? It's bollocks if you don't believe, right, in yourself, right? It's only an accessory to it. So now these players believe in themselves. And I saw the first half, there was groans. Cunningham made that mistake and there was a groan. Second half, you cheered when he made a mistake. Important that the energy goes to a positive outcome, not a negative. These guys believe. These guys need us, right? Pom Cotter, again, we could have talked about him. He was brilliant. Pit Pitonet, he was a bit lethargic at times. He stood up when it counted. TDK, brilliant. Crips, brilliant. Doc, brilliant, right? There's a bit of belief in these boys. And we owe it to them to push them over the line because they're doing this for us ultimately. I'm proud of them. So proud. Tell you what, good luck for the rest of the year, Saints. I went hard at you yesterday. Remember, in game, this is war to me. But always will shake your hand, even though 90% of you were dickheads to me. But you know what? Best of luck for the rest of the year. Melbourne next, chat. Melbourne next. If you want to become a member, link is in the description. Really does help the channel out. I've been really lethargic with a member's life. We will do one this week, though, at some point. Time is getting away from me at the moment. It is mental. But stand by me. Much love. Thank you very much, everyone. Palm out. You're rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad